me to Proverbs chapter 3. In case you want a topic for this subject, I have titled it Acknowledging the Lord. Acknowledging the Lord. Maybe you begin, we begin by you preaching to your neighbor. Just whisper into their ears, friend, acknowledge the Lord. Now I can't hear you. 90% of you are straight faced so it means you did not whisper into their ears please turn to your neighbor and whisper into their ears friend acknowledge the Lord okay Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6 you can join me after meanwhile I need to have your schedule for Thursday so that we finish these our things so send me your schedule for Thursday so that we can work together. All right. So join me in 10 minutes. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Ah, help me, Holy Ghost. And lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Can we read again? Now in concert, if your Bible is open, from verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Now, when the Lord dropped this thought in my heart, it was with the notification of a particular conspiracy being sponsored by the enemy. A conspiracy to see multiplied the numbers of believers who no longer acknowledge the Lord. If you have been a student of scriptures, you will find out that one of the gates of apostasy, which is a departure from the truth, was advertised to us in Romans chapter 1. And that gate was clearly defined. It was not a gate that was foundationally built by the enemy. It was not a gate that God constructed it was a gate that was activated by a thought pattern, a manner of thinking. The Bible said because they no longer, it means probably they began like that, but because they no longer, some translation says because they would not retain the knowledge of, or retain God rather, in their knowledge. <laughs> What that verse means is that within the scope of every kind of knowledge that you have, there is a space for God. There was a subject I was going to teach last year on the spirit of things. I'll do it this year because I think it's very essential. I think it's the secret, maybe I'll talk about it here a little, of living a life that is blessed. Because those in the choir must understand that you can sing the same song and one will just be a song, the other will be a ministration. The difference between a normal song and a ministration, even though what is being rendered is the same, is built into the spirit of things. You must find out if there is a space for God in what you are singing. And if there is a space for God in the song that you're about to sing, what makes that song a ministration, something that releases the spirit, is to learn how to, by priesthood, bring the spirit into that song. Remember the event that happened in the day that Belteshazzar drank from the cups of God. What, what kind of cups were the cups? You don't know the story in the book of Daniel? Is it Daniel chapter 5? Yes, I guess. Uh, what kind of cups? What materials were the cups made from? Oh, 
You said they were gold cups. Now, immediately the cups went to the lips, a hand appeared. The first question is who prayed? Did somebody say, God, God, they are drinking with your cups? How did God know that his cups were currently open to defilement? In the same way, when a believer uses this body wrongly, we need to ask ourselves, how does God know that your body has gone on a strange journey? I don't need somebody to report to me. The problem with Belteshazzar was he, he did not know that if God says this is my thing, what he means is that I am in it. So the cups were golden cups, but there was a space as close as those, those, those atoms of gold were to themselves. There was a space that could host God. So when the cups were captured, God stayed in the captured cups. When the cups were cleaned to be used, God was there because being captured and being cleaned were not against the consecration of the corpse. It was immediately the consecration was trespassed. The God in the cup reacted. And what he did was not to speak in the cup, was to write on the wall. Because there's a space. So the Bible says in the book of Romans that because they did not retain God in their knowledge, because everything you know. It's designed to have a space for God. And when God finds out that you have found a technology by which you can evict him from that space, they did not retain. He was originally there. They sent him out like a tenant. The Bible said that God gave them off to a reprobate mind. Go on, go and serve a strange spirit. Let him control you so that the things that are not natural for you to do, the King James Version uses the word convenient. So things that had a natural use, they began to misuse them. And it was God's punishment because it was not retained in what they knew. We need to ask that question because it's possible to be in church and be on the way to being given to a reprobate mind. It's God in things that you do. There is an attempt by the enemy to make us more believers move God out of this space so that when we are discussing one of the most obvious ways to find out if that process has begun is that when we are discussing you can no longer bring the counsels of God into the discussion have you heard Christians say see keep the Bible out of this thing I said, how must you mention God, God see ah we are watching want to drink and you are bringing God to leave God out of it it's a conscious attempt not to retain him in a space that he has created for himself. So the Bible says to us here, just take me back to, take me back to Proverbs. You will join me in 10 minutes. Too. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. It means there is a possibility to trust in the Lord partially. That your life is not one life. Your heart, which is supposed to be the, the, the hub from which your activities, your utterances, your associations proceed from. You remember? The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows forth what the issues the things that make for expressions in life so that's the hub where how you think what you say how you dress everything is generated it is possible that you give god you make god a partial tenant or a partial occupant so that when he comes into your space you tell him when it comes to prayers your god when it comes to my money you take what I give you. When it comes to my associations, you are not in charge. When it comes to my relationships, they are about me. If it is ministry, it is you. If it is career, don't come close. You see, and because the face of God that dwells within your members is the Holy Spirit, He is a kingly spirit, but He does not dominate by force. 
The technology of domination is willingness. Somebody say willingness. The reason, it was Jesus that pioneered it. You were brought into the kingdom and positioned for the reception of the gift of the spirit by the utterances, not my will, but thy will be done. So Jesus opened the gate of operating the will of God by a surrendered will. It means every time God wants to have his way in you, he will come by the way of a suggested will or a revealed will. It's actually a suggested will. And it will leave you to say yes or no. And to the degree of your yes is the degree to which his will will operate. Any area of your life that you shut out from him, another five minutes. Any, thank you, sir. Any other area of your life that you shut out of, for, of uh, or shut out, shut him out of, rather, he will stand at the door and continue to knock. So the admonition tonight is to trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Bring him into the area that governs relationships, governs associations, governs ministry, governs career, governs academics. And in the academic area is dissected. Governs going to class, governs preparing for tests and exams, governs the actual writing, governs your expectation. Bring him into every sector. Bring the, once you have a picture of the future, the first thing you need to begin to do before you labor to see it fulfilled is to labor to create a space that God can dwell in. It's one of the easiest ways to know if God is partnering with you or not because if you cannot live in it, it means it's not from him. Is somebody with me tonight? What's the second instruction? Lean not on your own understanding. So that first instruction is a direct instruction but it's also a revelation of a possibility that a man can claim to trust God but not with all his heart. Partial trust. Two, the Bible says, lean not unto thine own understanding. It means human understanding is a support system. And it is possible to build your life on that which you can comprehend. One plus one is but you know that 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 mathematical sum does not work in marriage in marriage one plus one is so it means that even though you are studying mathematics and you are an a student you need to understand the mathematics of god one plus one plus one is what but in the mathematics of God, in the formation of the Godhead, is one plus one plus one. What's the answer? One. Don't write that in school. <laughs> Your zero will have A's. But, but that's how it works. So, if your mathematics is divorced from God's concept of mathematics, you must understand that your, the, your ways... The things you the way you do, the patterns of life that you have known cannot work the purposes of God. So to lean on that which is handicapped in working the purposes of God is to waste your life. It doesn't work like that. So I would graduate and I do masters and I work for seven years and I look for a wife. While I'm looking for a wife. I'm building a house, I'm buying a car. Then I now give back to one child. And after two years, I give back to another one. Then we'll put in bad control and we'll be enjoying our lives. It's good to be a planner. But there was a, a certain king, youthful king, who became great and it was because, it was not because he planned, but because the Bible said that he made his ways before the Lord. It means his planning was, or his plans were a product of a partnership. So if I'm making my ways before you, I'm saying, Lord, in two years, I'm going to be here. What's your perspective? 
What you finally find on the sheet is a product of an agreed will. Not me. Why do you want to leave, my brother in green? What's your name? Promise. You have a good name. This, this view is making me see everybody. It's like I've not seen all of you before. Um, promise. Why do you want to leave? Why you, are you in school now? What level? Oh, what are you studying? Information? Systems? Science. I, ISS. Okay. So you have plans to go to the UK or US or where do you want to go to? To Dubai. My God, you see, sir, it's, it's already casting stone. It, it's, it's good. Will you marry before you go? You are not even thinking married for now. What I'm inviting you to do, promise, is that you will prepare your way before the Lord. Life in Dubai is good. I hear that in Dubai you can park your vehicle, very expensive, and leave the key. When the Islamic uprising was going on, it was going to hit the United Arab Emirates. I mean, that one that ravaged all of North Africa and moved into the um, Middle East. Some people call it the Arab, um, was it the Arab Spring or something? Because it was everywhere that flames were born. I heard that what they did was to give every family a huge amount of money in US dollars and everybody went for doing nothing. It's just collect and shut up. Continue your life. So it's a good place. When you begin to prepare your way before him, you will come into the consciousness of the true identity of that place. Because where a believer lives is not a good place. Where we live is the place. How, what it is when we come into it is immaterial. Even if it's a bad place, as long as God is there, it is the place. So you have five years to find the place. May you find it. Amen. Please be seated. Lean not, because it is possible to be a believer and be one that leans on his own understanding. He runs life like a mathematical sum. If it comes like this, goes out like that. That's Pythagoras' theorem. And he, he introduces this theorem, he finds the value of his C, and then he runs it. If you live long and you live like that, when you have gray years, you will have many regrets. Having given these two instructions, he goes to the third one, and that is captured in the sixth verse. We're almost done. The sixth verse. He says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. The word ways there um, expresses as the manners of life. How you talk, how you eat, how you walk. Your expectations from life in all of these ways acknowledge him. So I decided to do a study on the subject of acknowledging God so that we will know what scripture actually meant. What I saw in all thy ways was what I explained earlier that in every aspect of human existence. There is designed for God a space for accommodation. Every aspect. In that course of study, there is a space for God. And when that one course of study becomes different courses under that broad um, um, discipline, God has a space in Matt 1, 1, 1. He has space in Matt 1, 2, 1. He has space in chemistry. Do you do chemistry one to one here? Is there a course like that? One. Oh, one. Okay, we used to do one chemistry one one one, and we used to do chemistry one to one. One 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 is simple. One to one is um, hydrocarbons. So you have to cram your alkanos and. Um, how can know it and mm, ah, thank God for deliverance. Passing the exams is deliverance. 
Because they, are, they look alike. Our kings, our kings, our kinds. Okay. So, inside our chemistry, there's a space for God there. You don't believe me. The Bible says it is by him that all things consist. What does that mean? It means when you begin to, to break down the component exists and if you don't want that one give me john chapter 1 verse 2 okay verse 3 verse 3 sorry verse 3 all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made you know you were not there when he was making it how do you make people know that you made all things, and that there's nothing that has the tag made that was not made by you. What do human beings do? There's something you can do to a product that everybody who sees it will know. For example, this keyboard, were you there when they made it? So, you can come and say, it's David that made it. How will we know you didn't make it? It was branded. Branded Yamaha. In this, so what they did by branding was to leave their signature, leave their essence on that thing. If you get a, the cog is not this brand, right? Where's Pastor Timothy? The cog is a different company. Okay. Like, um, what of the, those, that Roland series? It's a different group. If you bring two keyboards from different people together, the sounds can look similar. But when a master keyboardist is playing, if you tie his eyes, he will tell you the brand is playing on. If you snap pictures now and say this picture was snapped by a phone, those who know phones, say, Kai, this thing will be techno. Say, say, no, it's not techno. They will tell you the name of the phones that can bring this product. Am I right? It's because every producer puts his essence in that product. It's so that in using the product, the producer will be introduced to you. That's the reason for that space. So the Bible says that there are ways, there are ways, there are ways to get things done. But in all those ways, the Bible says that you should acknowledge him. Because the design is, is that is in the ways. What does it mean to acknowledge him? One, it means to know him. To sustain cognitive knowledge of him. Two, it is to use his wisdom. So you want to go to class in the night, ask him for his wisdom. What should I read? What should I not read? When should I stop? When should I go home? To use his wisdom to follow his counsels in that which you want to do. Three, is to ensure that your ways express as that which pleases and glorifies him. Four, acknowledging God means to expect that in that ways your success will come from him five which is very important for me is to attribute performance to him to attribute performance to him that's one way i want to introduce tonight as acknowledging the Lord to attribute performance to him. Three scriptures. First Samuel 2, 8 to 9. I'll bring out one lesson from the three of them and then we go to pray and then we apply the oil. This is Hannah's song. She said, He raised up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dung hill. To set them among the princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars 
of the earth are the Lord's, and he had set the world upon them. Next verse. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. That word strength there in its, ex in its real form is by human strength. How many of you were helped to come to church this evening? How many of you came on a bike? Good. Who paid for the bike? Right. You did. Did you make the money? Okay, you do business. Okay, so you made the money. So it means if we ask you, how did you get the money to take the bike? You can give us a summary of how well you labored and then you were paid and the money was banked and you took of the abundance of your storehouse and then you mounted the bike. It's good. It means that your mode of transportation or your manner of transportation to church can be clearly explained but what a spiritual man does is that he looks throughout all the stages of that which he has explained and finds a case for God in all of them you have knowledge you can walk and earn money but your sanity was preserved not by you you can't keep yourself sane you can decide whatever no matter what happens to me i'm not going to be depressed i came to announce that there are many other forces outside depression that can turn the head some years ago angry at the number of madmen on the streets of ogomosho i took a walk on the sunday afternoon and i began to wage war against the spirit of madness that gave them accommodation when i got to the teaching hospital there were four of them between Innovate Lab side and the gate of the teaching hospital. And when I passed the third one, so the spirit of madness, I got two physical knocks on my head. Coy, coy. Ah, what is this? And the Lord whispered to me, little children, ye have overcome him, for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If that thing that knocked you, did not meet a greater one in you even you will have been mad now was i depressed okay let's say that i now got well after the thing and i came to church and thank god though i was just walking and i was knocked by an invisible hand and i lost my sanity will you believe you see you have you have, you have watched too many skits but I would have become mad. And except people had risen strong, I'll not be here today. So if, if I draw a, a line across certain aspects that I feel form the coordinates on the graph of my success, if I miss out the God sides, my line will be wrong. Are you with me? Because for you now, we'll draw the line. Sorry, I, I love mathematics a lot, so that's why I'm using that. So you will see skill acquisition, required labor, product delivery, product payment, right? Banking experience, successful withdrawal. Maybe you took your ATM card, you gave a POS machine. Sometimes the POS will deduct your money and you don't have money. You didn't experience that. That's how you could climb the bike. Who was in charge of making sure that what was supposed to work worked? Many times when we draw our graphs, we exclude God. We make it look like that scripture was a lie that by strength a man can prevail. I know the average student has drawn the graph of success, and there are certain motivational speakers who have found expression in church. I'm not saying don't be hardworking, but they can draw a success graph for you. Attend every class. Do every assignment, right? Do every assignment. Write every test. Go to night class. Jot. Read your jottings. Sleep on time. Wake up fresh. Do your revisions in the morning. Go to class with confidence. Write with boldness and you score an A. I can also show you people follow that protocol 
and the enemy ensured that those processes were not disturbed what the enemy introduced was high fever and the fever did not start from home it was a right exam so they now accompanied it so you held your Bible and well what they did was to introduce a supernatural expression that was not captured on your graph of success I used to have friends in school I don't know if they do it in Laute I schooled in the north and there were these file transfer young men who will not read they have been marked in darkness and all they come to do is to, to strive on other people's labor so when you get to the hall say say to how far once they shake you it will be far there's a swift data transmission that happens and then your head becomes what people call a blockhead is empty so they write with your mind and then when the exam is so you you'll be looking at the question the question looks familiar but what they asked you was how far the solution is far by the time you finish the exam they come back and they say ah see, see, see i struggle though say it is well once they say it is well they redeposit the file and then you begin to cry ha! and i know it too the truth is that you know it but you did not have a defense system like um, what do they call those things like a firewall to block the file transfer there is a space of God in our success that was the testimony of Hannah that a poor man can plot his graph give me the eighth verse that's what I really need a poor man can plot his graph out of the dust a poor man can move out of the dung hill a poor man can manipulate his way into the midst of princes so that he inherits the thrones of glory but Hannah's testimony was that if a poor man is successful there was a spirit that was involved and she decided to give voice to the spirit that she was subscribed to in the book of I think that should be second Samuel if I'm right I know it's in Psalm 2 second Samuel 22 30 it was repeated in Psalms chapter 18 verse 29 was David's song it says for by thee I have run through a troop by thee David was a, a, a master swordsman and it was possible for him to build the success of his warfare around his mastery of weaponry but he said it was by God that he ran through a troop have you seen a knife a hot knife pierced through margarine before no no stopping he just runs through that's how it was and that's how his men were three of them broke through a garrison of Philistines not to win a trophy but to get a wine skin of water David was revealing the secret of his conquests how that if a man died in the community of David's military men it was because there was internal sabotage as in the case of Uriah as in the case of um, was that Amasa or there was this ah, I've forgotten his name name, name was not maybe Abna or Amasa that was tossed through with a sword by the roadside and his body dumped and people moved on there must be sabotage if David will lose a man David was revealing that the secret was not competence even though competence was in place it was by the acknowledgement and by my God have I leapt over a wall how many of you can jump a wall it was a natural thing imagine me just going was was it by God that I came down as far as David was concerned even if the distance was this much his heart had been wired to see it as God you can jump down landing do you think it takes a long a great distance to land and sprain your ankle no it doesn't take too much labor to be damaged 
what David did was to put it on God. For no man on earth should give glory to himself. All the glory must be to the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. The word of there is sourced in. We didn't come out of ourselves. The things that we do that leave people in awe of what kinds of men we have become do not stem from a hub in our spirits. He said our sufficiency the, the source of the abundance of activity of the excellency of expression is of God God is the source it came out of him let's leave it there our sufficiency is of God so the Lord began to say to me he said the way that's the pattern of expression of the supernatural is not always designed to be visible so a supernatural event is not always spectacular are you with me god is a master of hiding the supernatural in the natural such that only the attentive can find the supernatural somebody goes to bed with fever and wakes up in the morning and says i'm strong what do you think is easier to build on as the source of your new strength sleep sleep something as weak as sleep say when i slept i rested my body just came back no what God did was to come into the sleep and while you were carrying out a natural thing he walked recovery so that if you are not attentive to the true source of your recovery you will put it on something something mundane your brain is a slave of spirits and to retain what you read there must be a spirit that is guarding it. Tonight we want to acknowledge him. To say that by training, by discipline, there are many things that we can currently do in the natural, but we believe that our natural expressions are powered by the supernatural. You are to work within us. The ability to articulate scriptures I, I, when I was going to see my parents I was meditating on my way back driving I was meditating when I came back home I was still putting down a few things but to be able to produce within that short time it's not because I studied it was because the Holy Ghost was involved I've seen people stay up all night and what they harvest is confusion but I've seen a man say help me and God shows up it's not a call to be lazy but to put the weight of performance on the one to whom it is due all the glory must be to the lord for he is worthy of our Jesus. No man on earth should give glory to nothing but the things or the glory must be to the Lord. 
Tatatilate, Epelio Sabaro de Vascaba Biatabota. Blessed be your name. So now I do want to take a few minutes to acknowledge him. And then we will administer the oil. The Lord said to me, because I was telling him, why just interject with an anointing service? He said, I made the oil, I have space in it. That's what makes the oil different. I've seen people fry egg with the anointing oil before. Stay with me. If you have a bottle that has been prayed upon and it's not anointed, it means it has been mingled with the spiritual essence. I hope you know that you can fry egg with it. And if you fry egg with it, there will be no consequence. Because the content of the oil is animated by acknowledgement. That's what makes it different. How many of you have handkerchiefs that came from a mantle service and one day you were sweating and just or after a few months you just felt i want to clean my shoe and you took and your shoe did not tear how many of you have done it before thank you i want to clean this window i have what what it as though the essence travels away after it some time the reason why there was no consequence is that when the supernatural becomes shrouded in the natural what animates the supernatural within is acknowledgement you are here the reason why people come into an anointed place and they go back home the same is the absence of acknowledgement all the glory must be It was a song I sang a few weeks ago. I think shortly before you play. You are here. You are here. And we bless your Jacob gave but I bring you word that Jacob was appointed for more there will have been many more things because he gave us a list of descriptions for that place this is the gate of heaven did he enter this is the house of God what happened in the house 
it was because while the experience was going on there was no acknowledgement God was in this place but I did not know what if he knew what would he have become so the question is do you know do you know tonight you want to acknowledge him as the doer of everything that is good I am here because you are here it is still working because you are in it it is going to change because you are involved <laughs> You are here. You are in my finances. You are in my ministerial expressions. You are in my study of scriptures. You are in my prayers. You are in my fastings. It is possible because you are in it. It is your hand that men see. It is your voice that men hear. It is your walkings that men celebrate. If I were left alone, there will be no testimony. You are the source of all testimonies. you are the essence of success you are the essence of understanding you are the essence of retentive memory you are the essence of accurate writing if you in case you are in business you are the essence of profiteering in case you are in ministry you are the essence of inspiration you are the essence of the potency of prayer it is you that powers the spirit of counsel you are the source of all favor it is you it is you it is you soy le tememos sabon taboleato barrosen sono taco e catuso salatabai vieto que vos tempo brasco pote beto man beto man meto se zutatataya every gift is powered by you yes you are the hope that generates the visions that i have my inspired thoughts do not come out of space they come from the bowels of your inspiration
Tonight, Lord, we come into that spiritual place and we acknowledge you. They say it's because we work hard. We say it's because you enabled us. The testimony is that we are favored, but we know it's because you put a garment on our shoulders.